Hi, I'm Brian with Pioneer Builders. Today I'm going to talk to you about ventilating using the Panasonic Whisper Green Select bath fan. This exhaust fan has different modules that you can plug in and they have different characteristics. This fan has two modules. What I'm going to do is go ahead and use my Meta glasses to hopefully do some nice recording so you can see what they look like up close. Then we're going to go ahead and go up to the fan and I'll insert them and you'll see how they work. So the first one that we're going to take a look at, and let's give this an, a shot. I hold this button down and we should be recording. So the lighting is a little tough. Let's see if I can get us a little bit of light here. So this is the multi-speed module. You can see where it plugs in. This just kind of pinches to be able to hold itself in there. It could be in there vertically. And you see that it refers to do two different model numbers. And on the inner uh, radius here, you go from zero to 30 up to, it looks like a hundred. And then on the outside, it goes from zero to 120. So that just shows you how this would interact with different types of fans, different models. This is your amount of time. So zero, and you see it goes up to 60. That's how much time per minutes the fan would operate. This allows you to meet ASHRAE 62.2, and that's a standard for basically residential ventilation. So you can run your calculations, you can set your CFM amount and your time amount and be able to meet code if you're using exhaust ventilation strategy. Now here's the second module. This is the humidity sensor, and I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera and start it again. I have it set for three minutes worth of recording and I have no idea how long I'm talking. Okay, so with this one, you can set it down to 30% with this little dial or up to 80%. I'm gonna recommend setting this to 80% if you're utilizing it in order to deal with condensation in a bathroom. And that's really why I recommend doing 80% is I'm using it to try to get the water vapor out as quickly as possible after bathing. So in a wet room that involves showering, this is a great module. You can see it has the same concept as far as the, um, the plug and play functionality, those same little things to uh, pinch there. Um, let's see what else. Oh, the sensor in here is really cool. It's kind of like a mini psychrometric chart. It pays attention to the temperature and the grains of moisture. It doesn't actually have to have condensation form on it in order for this to trip. 80% uh, is definitely gonna be like the steam that you get from a shower. On a really hot, humid day, if you had this at a lower percent, it might be kicking on and you might not want it. Now it turns out, I'm not actually gonna use this particular module, the speed one because we have a Panasonic IntelliBalance 100 ERV in the house, that's how we're meeting our ventilation requirements. But let me go ahead and show you what's going on up there. I'm gonna stop the camera, so to speak, and I'm gonna restart it up there so you can see it up close and I'll explain a little bit more about the functionality of what's going on. So I don't know if you can see it, but basically the fan is spinning right now. Neither one of these modules have been plugged in. Let me uh, turn on the camera. Man, this is just cracking me up. I hope you enjoy this too. I have to hold it down for a couple of seconds and that's where the recording actually happens. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the time and setting it as zero. I don't really worry about the CFMs because of that. And let me show you what's going on. You have constant power supplied to the fan. So you can see that that's running right now. The switch that's on is for the light but the switch over there for the fan operation is actually off. So what this is gonna do is take it, let's just plug it in here. And what that's gonna do is actually turn off the fan because I'm telling it to run at 0% of the time or zero minutes for 60 minutes. So that's gonna go ahead and slow down. Now if I wanted, I could turn on the fan switch there and it's gonna to go to this CFM, which is 50, 80, or 100. Maybe I do need to turn this down. Uh, 
All right, it's slowing down. All right, while that's stopping and you can see, I'm learning as I'm going as well. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the condensation sensor. Now we'll go ahead and install the condensation sensor and test it. Do you know what happens when you breathe? Yes, carbon dioxide comes out, but there's something else that comes out too, and that's water vapor. So by breathing on this, you can actually activate the fan and just check it for operability. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we're in. And uh, let me go ahead and use this as a light source. That's what it looks like. And let's see if that's enough to trip it. One more time. There you go. Now, once it senses that the uh, moisture event has left due to its internal programming and parameters, I'll go ahead and turn off. And there you have it. That's the Whisper Green Select and a couple of its modules. There's actually another module for Wi-Fi. I haven't gotten to play around with that yet. Hopefully on a future project I'll be able to, but I think it's pretty cool to have this uh, plug and play type situation where you can select different things. Hmm, maybe that's why they call it Whisper Green Select. All right, I had to get at least one joke in here today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions on operability, let me know as far as the wiring is concerned. I don't know precisely how it works, but you do want to have constant hot going to the fan. You could see that it was spinning and then you use that timer uh, module in order to ramp that down or off as the case may be. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the switch. So we're wiring in order to be able to utilize a switch because there's sometimes it's not about the shower. It's about the toilet and you can uh, change the selection of CFMs for what you want. It's running right now. Pretty quiet. You probably can't hear it. And then the way we do it is we have the switch that goes to the, the light diodes. I want to say there's two LEDs up there. And then we also switch it. Let's see. Can you see that change a little bit? And I think that's for the other diode. However, it's actually inside that little module. You want to have two switches if you want to get the full functionality for lighting. So anyway, leave a comment below, subscribe if you like this, give me a thumbs up, but I would like to hear your questions. I'm consulted with quite a bit and it's always the weird things that teach us um, the weird things. Anyway, sometimes when you do everything right, it doesn't turn out or it turns out well, but you don't necessarily know why. It's the weird situations that cause us to have to think a little deeper and different parameters that could be involved. Thanks for watching. Now go build something.